Good morning, friends in Christ. It is Thursday, and this Thursday is a special Thursday for our church because it is the last day of VBS. And every morning at 9 o'clock, the church bells ring, and that lets uh, staff know that it's time uh, for us to pray for the ministry and to pray for all the people in the world. And so it is nine o'clock. We're glad that you're joining us for our Facebook Live devotions. And as you get to the book of Acts today, we're going to be in Acts chapter two. And if you, you get to Acts chapter two, go ahead and hit the share button. And this is going to be our VBS lesson for today. And the lesson is what the early church was all about. And the early church was in awe, in awe of the miracles and the wonders of everything that God was doing as he was moving powerfully by the power of the Holy Spirit, changing and transforming lives. So when was the last time that you were in awe of what the Lord was doing? When was the last time you were in awe? For some, maybe it was the birth of a baby. It was a sunset. It was a life change where you saw a person who was going in one direction change and go into another direction because the Lord moved powerfully in their life. Maybe it was God doing something in your life. You were in awe that you prayed about something and God answered your prayer. And then there are other times that we're in awe, awe, awe. That was the feeling of a little boy who left VBS yesterday and was crying, his mom told me, because VBS was over yesterday and he was having so much fun. So that was a different kind of awe, awe shucks, you know. So when was the last time you were in awe because of what the Lord was doing? And that sets the context for us in Acts chapter 2. And we're looking at verses 42 to 47 that tell us what the church is and should be all about, an Acts 2 church. It says in verse 42, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Devoted themselves. They were sold out. They were all in. They were dedicating their lives and the pillars of the church and the faith for the Christian church in Acts chapter 2 is they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the word of the Lord. And so we too, as followers of Jesus, are dedicated to studying the word of God. That's why these devotions are so important. And it's important to do them together in community, but also privately and in worship, to be in the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord never changes. It's our foundation, it's our rock, it's our roadmap. So they're devoted to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. How important it is for the health of the church and for our own personal health that we don't walk alone, we don't fight alone, we're not on this journey alone, but that we have fellowship, that we are part of a body of believers, that we are in community and that we grow best in community. In community, we encourage each other, we love each other, we challenge each other, we also hold each other accountable. And then it's said to the breaking of bread, how important it is for the sacrament of the altar to have holy communion together as a body of believers, to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and for the strengthening of faith on this journey. And then it said, and to prayer. One of the most powerful things we can do is to pray. And we know the key to any relationship is communication. And prayer is our communication with the Lord. Not just us talking, but also at times us listening and allowing God to move powerfully in our lives. And so we see the pillars of the church with these spiritual disciplines. Then in verse 43, And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. These apostles are called apostles, not disciples anymore because they've experienced the resurrected Jesus. And the resurrected Jesus has transformed them and changed their lives and their purpose. Now, they are not just following Jesus, they are being sent out, sent out as apostles to proclaim something. And what they're called to proclaim is the good news of Jesus Christ and the salvation of the world. 
that God has fulfilled his promises, that he has sent Messiah, and that that changes everything. The hope and the courage that we now have and the miracles and the wonders that the Holy Spirit was doing left the people in awe, in amazement. When was the last time that you were amazed of how God was moving in your life? God's moving each and every day in our lives and around us. It's just, are we aware of it? Are we seeing it? Are we stepping outside of the distractions of the world and our own viewpoint to see the kingdom of God and to see the bigger picture, to see that different lens? You know, I love the videos now with all the drone footage, which shows a different perspective, a perspective above everything that sees everything. And that's the perspective that God has. And we want to look not just what's in front of us, but to look all around us and to pray for God to show us what he is doing and to see what he is doing. We continue with verse 44. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. The power in unity. We see the power of unity in the Old Testament. That there at the Tower of Babel, when the people were unified to build that tower up to heaven, and even though they were doing something God told them not to do, he said how powerful it is what the people can accomplish when they are unified, for good or for bad. And then we know that he separated their language and separated race and separated the nations because of their unified power. And as he separated that, in Acts 2, he redeems that. That's why there is that speaking in tongues, proclaiming the gospel in the different languages of all the nations coming together. And that's what we see in Acts 2, the redeeming of that. And what he says about the church, the church is powerful when it's unified, unified in doctrine, unified in its mission and its vision of why it exists to build believers, to reach out and connect people to Jesus. And then we continue, verse 45. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as they had need. They were a gracious church, a generous church. If you needed help, that's where you went. You went to the church. And there, notice their generosity was in them looking around at what they had and how can we use what we have to be a blessing to those in need. When was the last time you went and looked in your closet? When you looked in your room or you looked in the garage or you looked in your junk drawer and you found items and things of value that maybe you weren't using anymore but could be used to help those who need it. You know those old devices, the old phones, the old iPads. You're able to take those to women's community. That old computer can go to a single mom who's doing homework with her kids. Or those clothes that you don't wear anymore, or maybe you have too many, that can be a blessing to those who are in need. So look at what you have, and how can you use what you have that you're not using to be a blessing to others? Because that's what the early church was all about. And that's what we want to be about, that generosity. Verse 46, And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking of bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. Day after day, the people of God are coming together. They're praying together. They're breaking bread together. They're in the Word together. They're unified together. They're being gracious together. And then they break that holy huddle and they go out. They go out to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and to share the good news and to meet people's needs with the power of the gospel. It's what the early church was all about and what the church needs to be about today. Verse 47, and notice how they're doing it. Praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. God was blessing what they were doing because of their faithfulness, their faithfulness to the word, their faithfulness to the Lord, their faithfulness to each other, and going out and serving the Lord in faithfulness to spread the good news, especially to those who do not know Jesus and the hope that they had. And it would forever transform and change their lives. And that's why the people of God were in awe. That's the kind of church we want to be, one that's committed to the word of the Lord and its truth, one who takes that truth and goes out and spreads it, the gospel. A church that is praising God. A church is aware of what God is doing and moving by the power of His Holy Spirit. 
a church that's breaking bread together, having communion together, that is dedicated to the word, that is generous and gracious, and one that is unified because we know Jesus and we know the power that he has in our lives. And that's what the children are learning this week. They are learning that Jesus' power pulls us through. Church, we bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for this reminder of the power and the unity that exists in your church and with Christians, not only in our church, but around the world, that we're a part of something bigger than ourselves, your kingdom. And Lord, may you remind us of the pillars of the faith that are so important, of spending the time in the word and letting the word change us and mold us and shape us, to be dedicated to unity, to fellowship, to being gracious of meeting the needs, especially those whose needs are great, and to be in prayer and to be a people of God who are aware of what you're doing and how you're moving in our lives. Lord, may we see you today. May we see what you're doing as you call us to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. May you open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to your word and to your mission and to your vision for our church and for our lives as you continually work in our hearts and our souls. Continue, Lord, to pour out your Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Church, tonight we have our Vacation Bible School service. And initially we were going to be under the tent, but it looks like there could be some weather. So we're going to be down in the worship center. And so worship will be different tonight. It's not the typical Thursday night traditional worship. It's a vacation Bible school worship. And so there's going to be a lot of kids. We had over 200 kids in VBS, over 100 volunteers. So it's going to be a much louder Thursday night than normal. Normal worship service times on Sunday, 8, 9, 10, 30, and the acoustic service on Sunday night at 6, 30. Join us for worship as God moves in our lives. And we pray that that worship will put you in awe of how awesome our Lord is. God's blessings on your day.